What's going on guys, Greg here. So we got pretty much everything sorted out with the Type R so far. We got the wheels, we got the lowering springs on. And so I'm happy with the car. Everything is uh, the way it should be. I was supposed to bring the car to the body shop to get that scratch on the door repaired tomorrow. However, with a vacation plans and the shop being backed up, they actually um, called me and wanted to push it back to next Wednesday. Because if I drop the car off tomorrow, then it would have sat there for a long time because they are backed up with between parts for other cars and things like that. Today, we're on the way to Mount Kisco Honda. The new Michelin Cup 2 tires came in for the fronts. So I'm gonna bring the wheels in loose. I'm gonna keep the necks and tires as spares. I know with like the warranty purposes and all that, they may have wanted the car there for pictures. Who knows, but they're fine with the two loose wheels, so I'm happy with that. Cool thing is my friend who works there in sales and they have the new Acura Integra being delivered to the showroom. So while I'm there, I'm gonna go maybe check that out and see how it looks. On the way back, I'm going to change out the tail light on the 911. If you guys saw my first video, you saw that the driver tail light was actually cracked on the lens and water was getting in, like a significant amount of water. Worked out a deal with the seller to cover half the cost of the new tail light. Once we get back to the house, I'm gonna show you guys how easy it is to change a tail light on a 911. Made it to the garage. Here are the front wheels that we gotta to bring to Honda. These are the ones with the Nexons. These are going to, into the car, we're gonna to go to Honda. Here's the bike I have for sale, in case any of my followers are interested. As you can see, it's in really, really good shape. At 150 miles, it's been in this garage the whole time. It's never seen rain, never seen salt, nothing. It's I haven't even washed this thing and it looks like it's ready to go on the showroom after a dust. It's a really nice bike. 750, inspected, everything's good. It's uh, pretty much brand new. So I'm gonna ask 7,500 for this bike, brand new, they're close to 9,000 out the door. So you could save a little bit and get a pretty much brand new bike. But we're gonna load up these tires. Honda closes in about an hour, so I don't wanna get there too late. So nope, just leaving them there and then the shop's gonna take care of them. And then I guess they'll give me a call when they're ready. Look at that, nasty. So I'm in the Acura dealer, trying to find out about the Integra. I think it's uh, being prepped in service right now. But we're in the showroom just uh, Trying to find a salesperson to maybe show it to us. Here's a new MDX. This thing is big. This thing is really big. The MDX got like way longer than what they used to be. Holy crap. $74,000 for MDX. They were never this expensive. Interior looks about the same as the, all the other older ones. That is crazy. These things cost $74,000 now. Type S. Quad tip. Oh, there it is. Apex Blue. Mm -hmm. It actually looks really good. Yeah, it does. If you were to say now, it's boring. It's a mini TLX. This is bigger than the ILX, right? It is. I think it's about four to six inches So this is the A spec. So it's the only one that comes A with a manual A option, right? That's cool. 38K. Oh, thanks. Interesting key fob. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't know what the next six way back in the day. It's the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I like the hatchback. After getting the type bar, like having a hatchback is so much better. <laughs> oh, so it's got the easy access seats, so it slides you forward. It's got like 
the white interior sunroof. So did you get that cycle from you a couple weeks ago? Six miles. Well oh, Carvana. Oh, Carvana. <laughs> I tried to buy one from you guys. Listen, I know. It's not always that easy. Yeah. How's the shifter feel? It feels pretty close to um, the S2000 shifter. Yeah, bro, which is nice. What you want yeah, feels good. Is that got the nice screen. Oh, it's got little buttons here, the volume knob. Up the hood. Yeah, let's check underneath the hood. You know, Willie upstairs, the salesman, he's telling me there's no earth beams on top of here, so it's gonna have a VTEC in there. Really? It has actual VTEC, that's what he was telling me. So it's actually tuned better than the SI. I see. Look, it says Integra right here on the bumper. That's a cool little accent. All right, so we made it back to the house. We're going to change out this tail light because as you can see, it is absolutely cracked. I just have tape holding it together so no more water gets into it. I got the new tail light here. Brand new OEM 997.2 tail light for the driver's side. So the install is pretty easy. Go ahead and remove the two torque screws from here and then the whole assembly should slide out. All right, so pretty easy. These two screws there and there. We got to take those out. T25, perfect. So immediately, I noticed that the tail light started to shift. So that's a good sign. It's not lodged in there. Oh, I just lost the screw. But that sucks. We got new screws in the new tail light. So not too worried. But we got to find out where that other one went. Like that. And then there's one, only one plug. There we go, just like that. The part number is a little bit different, kind of worried, but we'll see. So this one is 997-631-41303. The one I just bought is the same part number up until the end. I think mine ends in 06. Wow, this is, this is nice. So it looks like they are the same tail light. You can see the part number on this one is a little bit different. This one's a uh, 997-631-41306. The other one ended in 03. Just using some mother's surface prep. So while we have it out, might as well clean it, you know. Just making sure that the gap on the lights are equal all around because you can go in here and kind of adjust it the way you like it. That's the new tail light. All right, so I've been looking forward to this for a while now. I am setting up the boom stick to do the 360 Forza view of the car from the behind. So with the Insta 360 camera, I got the 360 lens in here. So I can film front and rear, side to side, literally all 360 view. So with the app, you can pick the car as the object being tracked, and then the whole duration of the video, it will follow whatever I have tracked. This is the triple mount suction cup. That's gonna go on the back window. I needed something that's going to withhold this Manfrotto boom stick. But for the audio, like the exhaust, I'm gonna have to set up an external mic with a good quality microphone and just like kind of put it on the back bumper so we can capture that audio and the induction noise too we can maybe put a microphone inside the engine bay or near i don't want it to get too too hot where it destroys the equipment 
let's do something like that. Let me clean the window and then uh, tighten everything down. Do something like this. I don't think that's coming off anytime soon. So it's gonna go in like this. We just gotta figure out how to use it. I think we're gonna need an adapter of some sort. Because the hole in here is not the same as the one on the gecko. trying to keep it clean. This car has the $11,000 Dodson clutch upgrade. It's a PDK. It takes a few minutes for the clutch to warm up since it is a very heavy duty clutch. Being a Dodson, you know, it's a performance clutch that's meant to handle 1300 horsepower. So at lower speeds, it's not gonna be as friendly. We gotta let the clutch warm up per the owner about a few minutes before we do any driving. These 911s take forever to warm up for the oil temps the coolant temp gets up pretty quickly it's at like 125 right now but i'm looking at the oil pressure that's normal the oil temp doesn't usually hit the 150 bar which is the lowest bar until maybe like five minutes into driving it let's talk about the 911 and how it compares to the civic type bar car has been warmed up for about five minutes now so I think we can start to drive it. So you gotta rev it to like 1500 for the thing to even move. That's the thing with the twin clutch cars is they're not like a conventional torque converter. When you let go of the, the brake pedal and the car moves, I mean, sometimes the car will do that depending on how even the surface is. With this PDK, it's actually the first year that the 911 Turbo, or any 911 for that matter, got a PDK transmission. Pretty hesitant on buying one of these at first because everyone wants the manual in the 997 Turbos. It was not until the Dot 2 came out with the PDK where it actually became more attractive of a buy over the five-speed Tiptronic that the Dot Ones came with. Those are like the least sought out for when it comes to the 997 Turbo. So as you noticed, maybe you didn't, but just going into second gear, it kind of jerked and lunged forward because that's just how aggressive this Dotson clutches. Now I never driven a PDK 997 turbo with a stock clutch, but I've driven the 991.1 Carrera S with the PDK, and that was a lot more smooth than this one is. But I'm not really complaining because I don't drive this car every day. That's the biggest difference between this and the Type R, is the Type R is a year old car, it's got 6,000 miles now, it has a full factory warranty, so I really don't have to worry about anything with that car. This car, it's 12 years old. It's pretty much a six figure car used and especially new. This car I think was 150,000 brand new back in the day. You gotta be a lot more. See, I haven't driven this car in a while and it likes to lunge forward. This car is just so much higher of a caliber car in every way where you can't just get in and turn it on and just beat the crap out of it. I mean, you probably can, but 
I feel like these cars are a lot more delicate in the way that you treat them. The Type R, something you get in, you turn it on, you get it to operating temperature, and you just drive it and drive it and not have to worry about anything breaking. And when something does break, you're not really as worried of the repair costs. With this thing, having you know full bolt-ons, it's built by AIM Performance, it's got a lot of expensive parts on it it's a lot more intimidating to drive this car hard all the time you kind of have to baby it and treat it well so that nothing breaks on you don't get me wrong i drive this car hard when i want to but i don't get into it and just beat on it because this car is fast this car makes I haven't dynoed it, but it should make around 700 horsepower. It's all wheel drive, it's PDK. This car is fast. Like, it's probably one of the quickest cars that I've owned, zero to 60 wise, quarter mile wise, and highway pole wise, because it is so well built. The boost comes on very quickly. The turbos are pretty small in this car. They just have upgraded uh internals from force performance you know the interior it's pretty much mint the exterior in this car is mint it's cleaner than the type r and i just got done the ceramic coating on it so this car i baby a, a lot more than the type r that's for a reason because of the values obviously and the lack of a warranty it's really comfortable it's quiet it's it's a, ultimately a sleeper it's got the AWE exhaust. It was like a $5,000 exhaust system, brand new. It's got high flow cats, it's got mufflers, it has no drone. It's not something that's brutally loud and full race mode. You get into this car, you turn it on, it sounds pretty much a little bit louder than stock. But I've been driving in, you know, regular dry mode. This car doesn't have the Sport Chrono actually, so it doesn't have a sport mode or a Sport Plus mode. It does have the adjustable suspension. That's the only feature. It doesn't even have heated seats, nothing like that. So it's a pretty base model 911 Turbo, but it's got so much work done to it that it kind of makes up for it. It's got fairly low miles, 26,000 miles. It's got the beautiful Carrera Red interior. It's extremely well kept, this car has every service record, every modification done to this car in receipts. So this car is very well maintained and documented. That's the biggest thing between the Type R and this, is that this has basically double the power. If It's got more than double the power than the Type R. It's all wheel drive, it's just lightning quick compared to the Type R. But where this car lacks, is the turns and how imbalanced this car is compared to the Type R. The weight distribution, being at the engine, the transmission, everything is in the back of this car. There's nothing in the front except for the meth injection tank. That's basically in the radiators. So when you're on the throttle and this car accelerates very quickly, all the weight transfers to the back, you get grip nonetheless the front you can feel the front wheels come off the ground not literally but the whole front end just like lifts up and you start to get a little squirrely up front because um, it doesn't know where to go but since it's mostly rear wheel drive bias the front wheels are there to kind of just you know keep grip and pull it in the direction that you want to go this car is still on factory suspension, so I think lowering it and doing some other suspension upgrades would greatly help keep it more planted uh, front and rear. But this car squats. Like, when you're driving it, you feel the front end really come off, off the ground a lot. Um, it's not a good thing for back roads driving because you're going really fast, you feel the front end getting light, and then when you have to hit a turn, you gotta hit the brakes. All that weight transfer goes back to the front. And then when you get on the gas again, all the weight transfers back to the, the rear of the car. So it's not as easy to take this car through the turns confidently and as nimble as the Type R. This is a, it's a cruiser. 
It's a highway pull car, the drag car. It's everything I think besides a track toy. You can make this car set up for a track toy, but the way it is right now with just bolt-ons and you know stock suspension, this car does not do so well on the back roads as the Type R. So that's why I think having this and the Type R is probably one of the best duos for a car enthusiast if you're only limited to two cars. Because the Civic has the practicality of a crossover. It's got huge trunk space. It fits for great on gas. It drives really well. It's easy to drive. And you kind of just get in and have a worry-free car because you know Honda is built so well. It's so reliable. It's a cheap car to maintain. And then when you want to have something, you know, more luxurious with more balls for the Sunday drive, you hop into this. This car is full luxury. Everything is built extraordinarily well. Let me do a quick pull in the 911 just to show you how ridiculous this car is. This car feels very fast, but here we hit a turn and the steering in this car is very light and it's probably because I don't have the sport package, the sport chrono, so I'm not able to adjust that. So it's one of the things I dislike about this is how light the steering feels when you're going at higher speeds. The exhaust is pretty quiet, like you don't really hear it. And you just hear straight induction noise from the turbos and the intakes in the back. This car is really, really fun to drive. If you want to keep up with the other supercars out there, Cars and Coffee, this is an awesome car to take with you and bring a guest along with you too. So both cars serve really complete different purposes, but if you want to daily drive these cars, you absolutely can. I just decide not to daily drive this because I bought this CTR specifically to daily drive. But if this was my only car, I would make it work because it's really a car that you just turn on, you warm up for a few minutes and you drive it. These cars are built super well. It was done by A Performance, like I said, and they're one of the best Porsche shops here in the Northeast. That was like one of the biggest reasons why I decided to buy this car because of one, I think I got a pretty good deal. These cars are only going up in value. These cars are really collector items now. The 997 Turbos and the GT3s, um, those just keep going up in value. So right now I let my foot off the, the brake and it moved forward. So it really just depends on, I guess, you know, if the car's warmed up or whatnot and uh, if you're on an incline. It's super sleeper, you just mash the throttle and you're flying. And then when you get back into the city, it's like any normal 911. So that's why I really like the PDK. It's it's pretty quick. It would be quicker if I had the Sport Chrono because the tunes are the tune uh, changed the shift points. But the way it is right now, I don't really mind it. If I were to do it again, I would probably find a one with Sport Chrono. But for the price point and the location and all the parts done to it and the great condition this car is in, I decided to buy it without the Sport Chrono. It's been a while since I drove this car. I, it was a lot of fun, even though we didn't really do much except for you know one or two pulls. But you can see why having these two cars are such a great combination. The CTR is something you want to take on the back roads, whip around, take onto the track. This is more something you want to do on the weekend of a driver and to cruise around with your buddies but not really much to take on the track, I don't think. You certainly could if you set it up for that, but you know, both cars being stock for stock, I don't think this is the right one to do. But it is a head turner. It's a very classy, timeless car. These 911s never look bad. And I'm honestly happy with it. I was planning on putting lowering springs on it, it looks way better with lowering springs, but I'm not sure if I should do springs, coilovers, or just leave it stock. 
it just depends because these New York roads are not forgiving, especially where I live right now. Um, I've already damaged the lip on my CTR just by driving into like a little curb. So I don't want to damage uh, more parts and especially with the rubbing and all that stuff, it's uh, pretty bad. So we'll see. In the next video, I'm trying to get all my equipment set up. I bought that boomstick that I was showing you guys, but the size of the thread was not, I guess, big enough on the, um, the gecko, the suction cup mount. So the one that on is on the boomstick is actually a lot bigger of a thread. So I'm gonna take a look into seeing if there's any adapters and then we can go ahead and do that Forza 360 style video but well, I've had the AC on this whole time it feels so good I think the AC in German cars and American cars are just like really good the AC in the Hondas I don't know man those are those ACs don't work all too well oh another thing with this car it's got no reverse sensors so I gotta make sure I don't back into this wall over here I'm gonna leave it there but that's really it guys. I hope you enjoyed the video, a little comparison of the two cars that I have. If I were to pick one car over the other, you know, and considering everything, the value, my lifestyle, the drivability, the reliability, all day I would take the Civic Type R. It's super reliable, it's got the warranty. This car is a toy. This car is for nothing but strictly pleasure and priorities aren't always for pleasure it's for making the right financial decisions so i'm very lucky to be able to own both this car and the ctr at the same time it's honestly unimaginable i'm just grateful for that because a few years ago i would have never thought that i would even own a 911 turbo i'll see you guys in the next video we're going to go to acura and we're going to test drive that Integra and we'll see how it is compared to the Civic. Please smash that like button, subscribe and turn on notifications. We got a lot of good content coming up and don't want you guys to miss it. See you guys in the next one.